Hobie Adventure and Tandem Island boats are extremely rugged and reliable, particularly considering their lightweight and simple construction. However, under extreme duty use, there are a few things that can crop up and, um, and fail. So I thought we'd take a look at some of the things you can do to actually eliminate these problems and build a more bulletproof tandem island. Let's take a look. One of the oddities of the Hobie Island series boats and the one thing that in some cases has proven to be a weak point on the tandem island has to do with the way the gudgeon is mounted to the hull. Now this is an adventure island and this boat was actually designed first. The gudgeon is flat and it mates up against a stern which is also flat. So there's very little if any pressure on the attachment bolts. They simply keep the gudgeon up flush against, against the hull. Oddly, the Tandem Island, which was designed after the Adventure Island and apparently intended to use the same flat-faced gudgeon, has a rounded stern. So instead of the mating surfaces being flush with each other, you have a flat surface on a rounded surface, which allows the gudgeon to rock slightly. It, it won't move this much, but it puts a tremendous amount of force on the attachment bolts which accelerates their fatigue and eventually they can and often do break. Hobie attempted to rectify the problem not by changing the shape of the stern or the gudgeon but by simply molding in a third attachment bolt. And sure, that's going to help somewhat. It gives you more material uh, which should therefore take longer before it fatigues and breaks. But it's not the ultimate answer. The ultimate answer is to take the gudgeon and reshape it so that it matches the shape of the hull, thereby taking most of the stress off the attachment bolts and putting them on these larger, stronger pieces. If you'll take up, find a, uh, you, need, you need a rounded surface, and I don't know what you may have. It may be a large cardboard tube. It may be a, a 10, 12-inch piece of corrugated pipe or, or PVC. Put some sandpaper on it and work the gudgeon back and forth until the shape matches that of the hull. And when you have that situation where the pieces of the mating surfaces conform with each other, you've just nearly created a bulletproof attachment system for your tandem island rudder. One thing I would suggest, I don't know that it's necessary, I'm still running the, the two-hole version, which is what came with my boat, even though it did have the third screw. I guess they needed to use these up. But, uh, and, and I have total confidence in this now, but if you want to, you can get the three-hole gudgeons, shape it to conform to the hole, use three attachment bolts, and my guess is you've got a, a pretty darn strong situation that's highly unlikely to fail in any situation. Here's an easy way to perform the aforementioned task. I've got a standard gallon paint can, and the radius on the can is very similar to the radius on the back of the stern of the Tandem Island. Uh, it may be just, just a tad bit sharper, but it's awfully close. And I've taped some 60 grit sandpaper to the can, and then I will work this gudgeon back and forth until its shape matches that of the, the stern of the Tandem Island. Um, check for fit often. Expect this to take a little time. Um, I'll be here for another, oh, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes doing this probably. But once it's done, you've just taken care of perhaps the, uh, the one problem that does raise its head with some of these tandem islands uh, used continuously and or in rough conditions. This will take care of it permanently. One other thing to look for is the inside of the gudgeon mounting hole boards. These things should not stand proud from the surface as it mates against the hull. I don't know why Hobie even did that. These things should actually have been recessed, which would allow the mounting bolts to pull the outer edges, or at least as, as wide as possible, of, of the gudgeon up against the hull. You certainly don't want these pieces butting up against the hull before the outer pieces do. Now, sanding is going to take care of 90% uh, of that, but I often go back and actually chamfer the holes a little bit or actually reduce their individual heights by just a tad 
so that I make sure that all the pressure from the mounting bolts is up against the hole and not directly on the center of the gudgeon. Once you've reinstalled the gudgeon, run the screws up. Uh, and I, you know, I hesitate to, to say tight because I don't know what guys will do. I think uh, very snug is a better way to put it. Um, take your sacrificial plastic rudder pin and make sure that it's not binding. You want to make sure that you haven't done anything that's going to cause the grudgeon to, uh, to flex or bend and put this pin in a bind. And by the way, these pins are designed to break. They should break. This is what protects the boat uh, and yourself from uh, more extensive uh, repairs if you hit something. Just carry a few extra plastic sacrificial rudder pins with you. Uh, myself, if I use the boat a lot, every five or six months, I replace one just out of habit, take the old one and throw it in my replacement bag. The Aka bracing system on the Tandem Island is actually stronger than that on the Adventure Island, primarily because you're pushing. Every, all the forces are coming in towards the hull. Everything is compressing the bar, so your fasteners really aren't in play. The Adventure Island, of course, the bar runs the opposite direction. You're pulling. Um, so that's one of the reasons for the plastic uh, fastener, the giveaway, the sacrificial point. On this boat, it's not going to make any difference because the forces aren't in that direction. They're moving this way. So this is stronger. However, in the rare instances where we've had a, or seen a, an ACA failure, and, and this would be extremely rare, they fold up right there. That's because all of the fore to aft force on the AMA is concentrated right here. There is no fore and aft force on the front aka because it's hinged at the knuckle. It's all on this rear aka and it all concentrates right here at a single spot. Um, this could have conceivably been mounted further out. Uh, however, it, it possibly would have been in the way at some point. But what I want to do is split up the force, distribute it more equitably between the front and rear aka. For that reason, I'm not going to have to go out very far. I'm going to do about the same thing that we have here and put another one of these on the front aka. Okay, in order to do what we're talking about doing, you are going to have to buy two aka braces. Uh, they're different for the Tandem Island and the Adventure Island. Buy whichever one suits the length requirement. The Adventure Island is about an inch longer, so depending on where you're going to locate your your whole bolt, uh, you may want to go longer. You know, if you buy the long one and need to shorten it, you can go shorter. It's, it's more difficult, of course, to buy the shorter one and go longer. Uh, we're going to mount this to this bar and then to the hull and distribute the forces on the, the amas. What, uh, what you're going to have to look out for here is how do you, what's the best way to mount to the bar. Now, you can buy a couple of more akas. Uh, that already have the weld and all mounting fixture, but that's very expensive. There's a less expensive way to do it that's just as effective, and we'll cover that now. This is a common chain link fence post clamp. They're available from most hardware and home improvement stores. They don't cost very much, galvanized, although we're, we're going to coat this later. But here's what you're shooting for. And I'm not going to go into all the the hows and, and uh, every step involved in making this from this. You guys that are messing with your boats ought to have a, enough shop skills to be able to do this. If you don't, then this may not be a project you want to undertake. But essentially, we just reshaped a bit, uh, shortened, bored our quarter, quarter hole uh, for, the, for the mount, and this is going to fit in here. Going to have to have a little bit of a shim here, and you can make a, a spacer or use a couple of... Uh, eighth inch nylon washers, whatever you've got, just as long as you can uh, tighten down. And, and you don't put a lot of, lot of tension on this bolt, but you don't want to uh, break the ears off either. Okay, that's what you're shooting for. For coating our uh, clamp, I had mentioned using something that was uh, a non-skid, non non-slip type uh, coating. Uh, that would give us uh, both protection and lock everything in place without having to use an uh, unbelievable amount of tension. Uh, Plasti-Dip had been my product of choice, but more recently, in fact, while I was filming this video, I came across a, a product for sealing roofs and gutters, Rust-Oleum Leak Seal. It's thicker, 
uh, more pliable, and it dries quicker. I think this product has great potential, and we'll be using it for the remainder of this particular Okay, mounting our locator pins. Use the same geometry that the aqua braces use on the back of the boat. Boats aren't square, they're plastic, they cool at different rates. It's funky, you can't measure from places on the hull. You've got to measure from something solid. This is it. Figure out your geometry from the pieces on the back, match the front to what you've got on the back, to here, and then from here to here. You're going to have to use slightly longer bolts because we're going to have to go with a through bolt mounting system. Don't just take a sheet metal bolt and screw this into the hull. There's too much stress here. We don't have molded in brass nuts. So we go through hole. Do not drill this oversized. Drill it the same size as the bolt. These are quarter twenties. Back them with a fender washer. This will distribute the stress more equitably. Stainless steel preferably and stainless steel lock nut. Okay, to install, first thing you're going to do is take an X-Acto knife or a razor blade and cut right across the ear of the clamp, top and bottom, and skin that non-skid off. And we do that because we need this to be able to pivot back and forth so we can fold up for transport. As far as an attachment here, uh, you can buy a piece that such as uh, comes on the rear Akka if you wish. I'd just as soon not drill another hole in uh, this Akka bar, so I'll probably use some uh, industrial strength adhesive velcro right here just to keep it in place for transport. I tend to uh, of course have it in place when I use the boat. The key to installing this is leave this loose. Don't tighten this, this nut and bolt down. Leave this loose so you can move the clamp which is going to be hard to do. That non-skid really grabs. You may have to tap it with a block of wood but you want to go ahead and lock this down. Make sure it's in place and then adjust this as necessary either in or out, up, down, until your brace is in perfect alignment. You don't want anything in a bind, anything too tight. Uh, just nice, straight, at ease, in alignment. And once you've got that set, then you can go ahead and tighten this nut down. And don't overdo it. Just, just get it snug. It's a lock nut on the bottom. So uh, that's really all you have to do. And so now at this point, we have equally distributed the stress from the amas to the akas to the hull, both on the rear and the front, and I believe this probably makes this boat about as bulletproof as possible under reasonable use. The only downside that I can see to having the double brace system is that if you're in the rear of the boat or the front of the boat or the middle, wherever the case may be, and you want to fold the amas in, you can't do it all from one position. You're going to have to release the rear brace and then get to the front and re remove the or release the front brace or vice versa. Not much of a downside if you ask me, however.